Welcome back to an all new on my bookshelf. It is March 16th, I believe, or 17th. And here in Saginaw, it is a beautiful day. Sunny, temperatures are about at 70 degrees. Not at all what I would expect for this uh, middle part of March, but I'm glad it's here. I have some really cool books to show you today. Now, these are books about UFOs, and there are some real classics here. And I've acquired most of these just within the last week. I've had an, a very deep interest in the subject of UFOs since I was 11 years old and I had my first sight back in 1966. And I have a number of videos on here already about that, so I would uh, suggest that you take a look at those too. I'll try to remember to put them in the description below. But these came from two different house uh, cleanouts that uh, were being done. And uh, Bill and I stopped at, uh, and David stopped at one found amazing things there, amazing things, and they didn't want anything, so take whatever you wanted. And I don't know if you all know what Barrister or Lawyer's bookcase is, but I've always wanted one, but they're very expensive. And there was one of those there, so I got that. And I'll, I'll show you some of that stuff in another video. Uh, and then the second house that we went to, it, they had, instead of putting the stuff out to the road, they had a dumpster. And you couldn't actually dig down into the dumpster to get at the stuff, but um, we did, uh, we went down as deep as we could, put it that way. And we had their permission to do that, so it was okay. Now, let's start taking a look at some of the books that I have here to show you. This one is, the cover is not in real good condition. Doesn't matter though, uh, the book itself is. Flying Saucer's Top Secret by Major Donald E. Kehoe. But this is a, one of, this is a very um, sought after, book in ufology. It is classic and uh, in, in great shape they go for a lot of bucks. Donald Kehoe was a uh, retired U.S. Marine of the U.S. Marine Corps and director of the National Investigation Committee on Aerial Phenomena, in other words on UFOs, back in the day before we called them, what do they call them now? I forget what Aerial, some aerial some phenomena. Anyways, this is a really great book and one that uh, I was really happy to get a hold of for the collection. So that was there. Then, oh wait a minute, this, by the way, this one was published in 1960. So it isn't, I don't believe it's the first edition, but it is a book club edition. Uh, some people that matters to you, some people it doesn't, it does not matter to me. The next one here is the Flying Saucer Reader. And that's edited by J. David, and uh, the best-selling and most authoritative writings on the incredible but undeniable phenomenon of UFOs. Now, this one is also a book club edition, and it was published in 1967, the year after I had my sighting. And this one, the dust jackets are very good shape. Nice, there's a flying saucer in the background there. Uh, so just a, a really nice book to have. If you're interested in flying saucers, UFOs, that phenomenon, any of these that I'm going to show you today are ones that you'd want to have in your library. And I can't believe these just came to me. Great. Let me stop here and tell you about a young man that came up on the porch yesterday that some of these came from. Last winter, I was over at a gas station not too far from the house here, and there was a young man out there looking lost, alone, and with nobody to talk to. So I went over to him and asked him if he wanted a cigarette. He was really grateful for that. <clears throat> and I said, well, <clears throat> he said he'd just gotten off the bus and, uh, from Bay City and he had no way to get back over there. Um, and I said, well, follow me home and I'll make you a few cigarettes. And, and then, uh, you know, if there's something I can do to help him. So he followed me home and I made him some cigarettes and we talked for a little bit out here on the porch and then he left. Well, yesterday I was sitting here uh, not here, I mean, I'm sitting on the other side here in the living room. And I heard somebody come up to the door and say, Hey, Dennis! And I looked out and I said, Yeah. He said, well, You don't know who I am, do you? 
And I said, no. <laughs> and he said, well, I'm Dustin. I'm the guy that you gave the cigarettes to last night. You're drinking water. So, and I gave them to him and I ate them four or five. And he asked me what kind of things I'd like to collect, and I told him books, stamps, coins, pretty much anything. So I got up this morning, and there was a stack of books on my front porch here. From, and seven of these books were ones that he brought to me. So seven of these just came to me today. This next one is UFOs for the Millions by Harold Howard E. Chambers. And it is uh, for all, all ages, including, uh, including the present. It becomes fascinating to come the spirit world in action because a lot of people do, and I do also now, feel that the UFO phenomenon is a paranormal phenomenon. And I'm not 100% sure on what the UFOs are, but I'm 100% sure that it's a fascinating time. It's fascinating many times in many years, of course. The next book, The World of Flying Saucers, uh, written a scientific examination of a major myth of the space age by Donald H. Menzel and Lyle G. Boyd. It's, again, this is a classic of ufology, um, and it's in, it's in very good condition. And it was published in 1963, so uh, great book. It says on the back cover, uh, there's a blurb written by Major Carl R. Hart, from, uh, Project Blue Book Information Officer, and he said, It is a pleasure to publicly recognize the substantial contribution of Dr. Donald H. Menzel and Mrs. Lila, Lyle, excuse me, G. Boyd, to the growing accumulation of solid scientific knowledge related to unidentified aerial phenomenon. Uh, as bona fide scientific researchers, they have been accorded full access to the Project Blue Book files. And so it is another uh, very desirable book that UFO, UF, 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 ufologists excuse me, would certainly like to have in their collection and I'm happy to have it in mind. Dr. J. Allen Hynek, famous for the, the sightings that, in 1966, when I had my first UFO sighting, uh, he was sent in by uh, Project Blue Book and the United States Air Force to try to find out what was being seen here in Michigan. Now, I'm not gonna go into detail of that, like I said, I've covered that in three or four different videos. But this is the Hynek UFO report it details over 12,000 sightings and 140,000 official Project Blue Book pages, separates the real from the false, and reveals what the government suppressed and why. Now this was published in uh, 1977, and so while J. Allen Hynek was uh, a great researcher, um, the government hadn't really released much information to us as to what was uh, what they knew about UFOs at that time. Now, Heineck, as I started to say, when I was uh, in, uh, when I was 11 at 66, the uh, UFO phenomenon in Michigan was quite startling. And uh, the Air Force sent him in. And anyways, his explanation for it was swamp gas. Um, of course, anybody who had seen the UFO, or UFOs that were being seen at the time, knew that it was not swamp gas. But I will try to remember, and this was published by Valentine Books in 1974. This is a first special printing, August 1978. It was uh, written by Robert Eminger, and it starts out with the, it says in the back, UFOs, the real story, January 1948, with the crash of, uh, I think that's when the Roswell crash took place. Uh, and then right on up through December 1973. When, and so this it's a really good book to have if you're interested in UFOs. Now here's a vintage copy of Fate Magazine. It is from 1966. And it has as one of as its uh, head story here, the great UFO flap at Ar Ann Arbor, Ann Arbor, Michigan. This was published only a couple months after the uh, UFO flap here in Michigan had died down. And, uh, but no explanation other than swamp gas was ever put forward. But they have some really good interviews in, in, this art, in the article here, which uh, features people that were very prominent in, in the sightings. Sheriffs and, sheriffs and police officers, uh, Dr. Hynek, and uh, many, many others. 
So this is kind of a, a di very difficult to find, and I was really happy to be able to obtain a copy of that. Next up, two UFO comic books, UFO Mysteries, both of them, and no, UFO Mysteries and UFO Encounters, both published by Golden Press, and they were down at each, and they were published in, and Gold Key had presented these stories first. They're by Golden Press here, but Gold Key had presented them first. It had the Michigan UFO sighting in it, and many, many others. I don't think the uh, Bible in Flying Saucers by Barry H. Dowling, a thought-provoking inquiry into the evidence linking ancient astronauts in the Bible, which I think is a bunch of kerfluffle, as Judge Judy would say. Um, the, they could be connected in the sense that uh, angelic beings and demonic beings, fallen angels, <coughs> could take the form of, hey, could take the form of craft to deceive us. But it, it's interesting though to see what uh, what it, what's in here on it. There, I, you know, I read this book when I was a youngster. Uh, I don't know if I said this, but it was printed in 1968. What's in there? I don't know if you can see her, but this is my outdoor kitty shadow, and she's a good girl. So this came out on the heels of Eric Van Daniken's work, which we all know was Chariots of the Gods, and that was right here. Uh, this particular copy of it, and again, it's a book club edition. I don't think they want to see your tail. It's a book club edition. And uh, by G.P. Putnam's Sons in 1968. And this book caused a real, when it came out, caused a real stir because people took wholeheartedly what that thing he had to say. He was later. I believe was convicted of fraud and such, but the information that he presents in here, in and of itself, is fascinating. But not from the uh, standpoint of those ancient astronauts that did it. But sold millions of copies. It was a very popular book. I had it, I read it. It was very influential on me at that time. And then we have another Von Daniken one here, In Search of Ancient Gods, My Pictorial Evidence for the Impossible. There's a Mr. Van Daniken look like. And uh, this one was published in, in 1973. Loaded with, loaded with tons of fascinating pictures and uh, evidence that, uh, pictures and things that Van Daniken used as evidence to prove that we were created by an alien race and not a loving God who was in heaven. Again, it's a fascinating book from a fact standpoint, but it's not factual, but it's trying to destroy the biblical narrative. Uh, and then there is Von Daniken's Miracles of the Gods, and that one was published in 1976. And in this particular book, extraterrestrials visited this and other solar systems uh, and on the planets that seemed suitable, they left behind scones in their own language. Certain groups of mists and sediments have an advantage over us. They tamed, developed, and trained the brain, the monster, better than we have done. These preferred students of uh, overripe intelligences are sending energetic thought impulses to us, to their brothers and sisters of the same heritage. And of course, Van Daniken was convinced that we were descended from a really a genetically modified uh, uh, origins into what we are today. And then I have this. This is not that old. Fire in the Sky, the, the uh, ex extraordinary story of Travis Walton, who was abducted by a UFO in, uh, I forget what year it was. There's also a really good movie called Fire in the Sky that tells the whole story, which is fascinating. This was published in 1996, and it was published by Marlowe and Company, New York, and it was written by Travis Walton, who actually experienced this. Now, there's a quote in the front of it from Mr. Walton I'd like to read to you. It was many, many years ago that I got out of, uh, 
a crew truck in the National Forest and ran toward a large glowing object hovering in the darkening Arizona sky. But when I made that fateful choice to leave the truck, I was leaving behind more than just my six fellow workmen. I was leaving behind forever all semblance of a normal life running headlong toward an experience so overwhelmingly mind-rending in its effects, so devastating in its aftermath, that my life would never, could never be the same. And that happened on November 5th, 1975. Excellent book. Excellent book and an excellent movie. And I've got one last book to show you. And I'm going to show you that in a minute. Cool. Well, I'm shooting a YouTube video, but... Well, let's do this. Oh, I'll turn it around. Have I got you in there? Almost. I never get to, to show any of my friends in the neighborhood. This is my neighbor, Charles. It's his birthday. He's got an awesome day. Have a great day. Lots of fun. God bless you. I think one of my old, I think one of my old neighbors when I stayed out there for so long time. You have a great day. Well, as I said, one of my neighbors and friends. The last book I want to show you is The Complete Astrology. Uh, yeah, so it has not to do with astrology. Yes, it does. Astronomy, that's what I meant to say. It doesn't have anything to do with astronomy, really, but with the art of telling the future by the stars. It's an interesting book because it's from the... Uh, it's from McGraw-Hill Book Company, and it was published in 1971. And it is so typically, the type styles and everything of the 1970s, many colorful illustrations in the book that are, you know, make it a really neat addition to, uh, to collect in with my UFO stuff. So, so anyways, this is a fine, fine collection assembled within the last week. Back in the day before my divorce, I had a huge collection of UFO materials. In fact, the very first uh, thing that I had published on a national basis was in UFO Universe magazine. It was edited by, edited by uh, Timothy Beckley Green, or Timothy B. Green Beckley, I think it was. Uh, he passed away uh, fairly recently. But, uh, so it's been an interest to me for a long time, and like I said, since my original sighting back in 1966. So I hope you enjoyed seeing these books. I think they're awesome. And you know what else I think is awesome? All of you on the other side of the screen. I love you all much, and I hope God gives you a great day. Many blessings to all of you. I'll see you again real soon.